Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, ArchLine XP Complete Software Solution for Architecture. Tired of tedious 2D drafting and looking for a program to handle even the most complex building structures? Meet ArchLine XP, the software that builds upon your existing CAD skills to craft multi-story 3D building models, generate complete documentation and real-time render visuals. Today's webinar presenter uh, are Ilish Pap. Uh, Ilish is an architect, CG and CAD specialist, product manager, supporting and tutoring architects and interior designers. And Zoltan Toth, who is an international partner manager and sales marketing specialist. Let me tell you a little bit about Novedge. Novedge is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and no headaches with all this. Check us out at noveg.com. I also want to inform everybody that um, with uh, our partners at Archline, we have been uh, coming up with a fantastic offer for you guys. Uh, you can request now um, an Archline XP trial for two months, the last two months. So you have a couple of man, uh, uh, weeks to ask for the trial, just email sales at novedge.com and we'll uh, accommodate you. And uh, sometimes trials don't give you enough, enough chance to get familiar with the software. I think this is an amazing initiative and thank you uh, Zoltan and Thoth for uh, the generosity. And now uh, without further ado, I'm gonna share Ilish's screen and so he can tell you more about ArchLine XP. Take it away, Lish. Yeah, I'm um, taking, uh, so I'm showing my screen. I hope you can all see it clear and uh, you can sure hear can. me clear and, Perfect. and loud. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, show you how to get uh, from scratch, how to get to this point, which you can see on screen when you have a fully built uh, building. I mean, it's a virtual building, but it is actually also uh, really, uh, in, in, in reality, it is also realized. Uh, today we we're, we're gonna uh, create a full building from uh, 2D drawing, import that 2D 2D drawing and uh, create the full 3D BIM model. With all the BIM data we also create uh, the schedules out of that, and we will create visuals, uh, spectacular visuals and even uh, videos, animated videos. We have a lot to do. It's uh, we have the, the 60 second 60 minutes to to show you the most of the majority of the software's abilities. So. I'm gonna pass uh, the word out to Zoltan as well, so he can he may say a few words about this. That's right. Hi to you all. As as you might already heard, uh, Arshine is a design software, and and it does many many things. So today we decided that we are going to narrow it down to architecture, especially when it comes to taking a line drawing and working it all the way until it becomes something like this, a terrace building with some uh, with some uh, visuals. So we are going to start with a DXF DWG drawing that you could get from other CAD sources, and we are going to elaborate it until it becomes something like this. So what Ilish is showing now is a, a chart of our import and exports, because one of the main uh, things about Arshine is that it's very open towards other software platforms. So if you, if you already have a huge amount of data realized in another CAD software, you can use that. Giving you a few examples, uh, PDFs, raster images, DXF, DWG drawings, uh, Revit files, SketchUp files, all this you can read into Archline because we're not trying to be you know, different. We try to work with the other software uh, products. So one, uh, the workflow that we are going to look at today is that imagine that you have a two-dimensional line drawing and you want to turn it into a uh, three-dimensional building. And that is what, what we are going to, uh, going to show you in real time. We are going to do some jumps while we are working, but you get the main idea. So the first thing that you do when you are working in Archline and you want to base your work on a line drawing is that you actually import said line drawing. Now, obviously, depending on the scale, uh, you might need to set up the right scale, but if this comes from another peer, an architect of, uh, or a colleague of yours, then this scale should be fine. Now, we see that this uh, drawing was saved in, in, in a metrics uh, environment. So we are just going to accept it as it is. Um, I think, before we do anything, let's just discuss very briefly how to change and switch between the units. Um, 
the first but we have obviously yeah, we have well, to, I'm, we just, have to I'm just checking them. whether the uh, yeah, yeah. it was correct so now yeah I think I think this drawing is fine but what we want to know is that how do we toggle between the imperial and the metric units so this is just a quick recap if you go to the settings you can not only set up the units that you're using but you can also set up the the rounding of the decimals and the fractionals so if if you have a special standard based on which you work that is the way you set it up. Now, having said that, let's see how do we get from an image. This is a two D line drawing, isn't it? So it's just a bunch of lines, right? That's right. That's right. What we have here is a DWG drawing with only plain lines, groups, and uh, other arcs, and then things like the symbols. Uh, there's nothing in the three D, but as we will start uh, doing that, I actually start doing uh, creating the walls. You you have this tool set at the top. These are the ribbons for the uh, building, interior drafting, and several other options, which we will go through quickly. Mm -hmm. And then so here you can find the wall tools. And actually, if you just would like to create a wall, it's very simple. You just select any of those uh, styles, which you can freely uh, also extend by yourself. You can create your own styles. I'm just picking up one. And then you can just click once, and then you just say, okay, you would like to have like uh, something as a wall like this length, and then you actually already have that. It appears in the 3D the proper settings and then you can just uh, you know modify it and do whatever you want but now yeah. as we have as we have a dwg file i will use this uh, command and then uh, i will just process that drawing so what Elish is doing now is that he doesn't really care about the wall thicknesses because he has a line work to work with so all <laughs> he has to do he just clicks on the lines endpoints and the opposite side of the wall and then the software recognizes the lines and turns them into walls. So even if the wall thickness would be changing as, as he would go, <laughs> he doesn't have to care about that. He just clicks on the endpoints. Uh, one very important thing to point out here is that now he's working with a very conceptual drawing. So this is a one layer wall. Obviously, in reality, you would face with multi-layer walls, maybe framed wall construction. We have a few examples for that too. So later on, we are going to show you how to use a uh, maybe stud work or multi-layered elements so we have a project file for that to illustrate so yeah, we definitely have yeah mm -hmm. what it is just doing now he drafted the main uh, walls and then he wants to draft the the partition walls and for that what he does is that he just sets up another wall style where both sides of the wall is uh, is white colored and he's just now tracing over the drawing so nothing fancy here it's just rinse and repeat but that's the best way to recognize how your drawing could be turned into a three-dimensional uh, model and once we have that uh, under control, the next thing we have to do is that create a piece of slab, something which which could be under your building, you know, but for that, there are automated tools. For example, you can just grab the whole drawing and say to the software that you want to have a piece of slab generated under all the walls that you have. Uh, don't forget, again, a slab could be a multi-layered uh, slab with maybe beams and other elements. We are not care. We don't care about that at the moment. We just want to change the texture to something nicer, maybe a um dark parquet or something like that so let's just find something dragging and dropping it and that's as easy as it gets so if you already know other three-dimensional um modeling software this drag and drop action should not be nothing new should be nothing new to you so if you want to create something based on a line work then you can just trace the lines just like you do in any other cat software and the result will be there before we proceed Ilesh, can you actually show how to disable layers that we don't need because when you work in CAD you are already familiar with layers and you know that the project content is located on layers if you don't need the rest of the drawing anymore you can just yes. disable that yes well now what we have here on the right hand side is the 3d it's, it's the beam model and at the left hand side we have the beam model plus the 2d drawing and whenever we import something, just as you mentioned, all the uh, DWG file that uh, has the layers, it is carried into the software and then you can manage all those layers here. Now, here at the right hand side, when you import anything, when you import a DWG file, you will automatically see a, a so-called layer filter that when you, when you click on that, you will see all the layers uh, that were inside that uh, DWG file that was imported. So what I do now, I just uh, hit Control A, or I can just simply, you know, click on the first one and shift shift click on the on the last one. So I'm just actually selecting all the layers, and I turn off the visibility of their uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the properties here. And when I say OK, then I can see only what I have created now uh, in this session, and nothing that was imported is is visible at the moment. And well, actually. Uh, this is also good to see whether I made a mistake. For example, here I, I just uh, clicked somewhere at the wrong spot, so I just used the move node option to 
um, uh, change the shape of this uh, item. And by the way, this is also uh, how flexible most of the items in Archline are. It's like a, you know, it's like a rubber shape that you can freely reshape whenever it's necessary. Um, That's you, right. You so, see another uh, uh, example of that. I think the <laughs> next logical step will be to add the doors and windows. So I assume you have another version of this file where most That's of right. these are already done. So let's talk about how to import openings and, and add them to the software. Now, Archline comes with a door and window library of its own. So it comes with any kind of double winged or, or sliding windows and, and even sliding doors and these kind of elements. If you don't find in the software that you're looking for, there are tools to create the content that you that you need. So, but having one, said that, we are going to use basic yeah. elements in the software. Yeah, and just just one side note: if people, if you would like to try the software, it's a it's a very uh, important thing that you should uh, be aware of, which we sometimes forget to mention. But it's very basic and it's very uh, important to know that whenever you would like to switch between those two content windows, you can use this with this tiny uh, little button here. So you can just click on the window that you would like to activate, and then you click here. And the software will switch the the, the windows. Okay, it's just just a side note for those of you who would like to uh, um, try the software on your own. That's right. So now I've so switched. How do we the add? Uh, I'm sorry. How do we add the doors and windows? Uh, we have Lineworks, so we want to. We again don't don't care about. We don't want to set up uh, set up the the door and and window width because we already have the nodes, right? So how do we take advantage of that? Yeah, so what I do, I just go to the uh, library. So as you can see, there are several different types. Of this. These are not all the types. You can always go to the More tab and find all the rest of the items. And basically, whenever you select any sort of door, you have several options. And when you when you process a DWG drawing, you have this uh, door by two points option. And then you have you still have a several uh, option for styles. But whatever you select now. Uh, it's just a starter, so you don't have to stick with that, that option. You can always reshape, always change what you have created. What I do now, I just quickly trace the content. Sometimes I just do the same with the double uh, door. I don't mind what the what the setting is, and then later I change the style. So I just quickly uh, click on the two points, set up the opening direction, and I go on, keep going uh, to, to, to add those, all those doors and the windows as well. It's just, that's the same thing. Can go to the libraries here and even you can if you don't want to place a single uh, type you can go to the standard library you can go to the any of these libraries and find for example double hung you can find i don't know um, uh, a single or a single hung mm -hmm. window or, or anything like that but even you can use the search field for now now for a fact i know i have a window that i would like to place and it contains the name divide or divide did and this is what I actually would like to place, any of those that, that you can see here. And then when I uh, click and select, and I have the option to uh, place it with the end points or, 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 or with uh, given points, this is how it works. But still, I have the, the same option that you saw before, the window by two points. So in that case, you just pick the, those two points on the, uh, on the drawing, and then you just keep going with those uh, settings. And How just do you as change I mentioned, the properties. Uh, I see that uh, the for the windows, for example, the the seal heights are not okay. <laughs> so how do you change that respectively? Well, these are uh, all appearing uh, in a so-called what we this is what we call it. It's a it's a grip or a, star, uh, a marker. And when you click on a value, you can just uh, you know type a new value and then it changes. And that the same goes with the with the height. And also you have the option to. Uh, kind of graphically change the uh, the the window, the position of it, and so on. So you can elevate, you can uh, resize it. And also, if you have one window that you like, and you would like to uh, keep uh, repeating that and, and use the same window, you can use the, uh, wherever you click on the software with the right mouse button, you will see a contextual menu, and then you have this create similar option, and then you can just keep going and say, Okay, for a fact, I would like to place a window here and there. It's kind of a, a bay window style. So what I'm doing, I just uh, you know uh, connect them together. In the in case of using the window tool, you have an option to uh, use this uh, join option, and then you can join two windows, and then it will automatically create a corner window, just as you can see it here. And then with the same tool, I can just keep going and say I would like to create another. Uh, proper uh, proper uh, copy of that, uh, for example, to this location and then to this location and then to this one, and then I uh, just change the materials and so on, and this is how it goes. 
I think now it's time to load up another version where we are going to place the staircase. But while you do that, one thing I just want to call the attention to is that not sure if you have all seen that, but sometimes Ilesh was working in the 2D and sometimes in the 3D, which means that most things in Arshine can be done in either views. So just work in whichever is more convenient for you. If you're coming from a 3D modeling environment, then feel free to use the 3D. But if you're more fond of get style of working, then just working the 2D, whichever is, is better for you. So when it comes to staircases, the important thing here is that you don't have to draw something by step by step, even though you can. You can just instead look for a, a predefined shape and then just sketch where the staircase should go. And the software does the rest. So it's going to calculate where the, where the staircase starts and how high it goes. But the result, you can obviously fine tune. So this, what you see on the screen is obviously not good enough. So we say that just take the floor height into consideration. We don't want to add the floor height manually. We don't know how much, how high that, that could be. So we just say that take it as it is and define the number of steps. Three on one side, 16 on the other. And then in the preview, we see exactly that it's starting to look much better. And I think before actually we start moving to the next floor, it would be probably time to talk about how to, in, how this is a good example, uh, Ilish, if you could stop here for a second, the interaction between elements. We see that now the, the staircase is superimposed over the wall. So how do you make this kind of cuts? Well, you don't have to make these cuts. The software does that for you. So if you define that certain elements should go in interaction with each other, if you say, for example, that the staircase should get into get uh, into interaction with the wall under it and cut it then you can just say to the software to rebuild the 3d and then the cut is done so you don't have to manually profile the walls because the software does that for you so let's talk about how to add another floor and before we do that discuss a little bit about the floor structure of the software because obviously we want to know how to add and how to manage the floors uh, if you could just uh, open up the the floor manager for a second and then we can see that even though we haven't done anything but the first floor, the software already created the additional floors above and below. This is an automatism. So this happens by itself, but if you want to add additional floors, if you want to remove them, then you can do that. Uh, Ilesh, I understand that we have a very nice illustration in terms of how the floor structures work. Maybe if you could show that. Yeah, there it's this go. one. So, uh, it's, it's also showing that uh, when you create a, a conceptual model uh, or you create a model with all the layers, the software will solve it automatically. And of course you have the full control over how it's uh, connecting those uh, uh, layers. Uh, uh, later, just in a second, we will show you also how to uh, how to actually manage multi-layered uh, walls, for example. But as you can see, if you create those, uh, the software will create all the, all the connections between the layers. And then this is how it looks like when you have a, a building with multiple floors, it's just a kind of an, uh, a section. Uh, a tiny uh, part, uh, 3D section of the of the building part, so you can easily understand how the first floor, the the second floor, the basement, and so on are connected to each other with the roof floor on top. And what is the story with framed construction? So what what happens if you don't have this kind of multi-layered brickwork, but instead you have uh, stud work? Well, in that case, uh, let me just open up the other sample that I've prepared for this. Uh, this is actually with a few. Uh, multi-layered frame framework uh, structure that you can see for example here and I actually have a kind of nice uh, tiny uh, section here it's a very simple one but as you can see all the structure and the layers are visualized mm -hmm. here it's also a simple diagram to, um, to to make you understand how those things connect to each other so what we have here uh, is is something that you can fully uh, customize. So I think now it's the good, uh, it's the best to just quickly jump into the to the settings of the wall, so you will understand how a, a simple simple wall is turned into a, a multi-layered one. It's actually all within the properties, and you can edit the compound wall uh, settings here. You can add all these layers with this tiny plus. You can set up the materials, the function, and so on. And actually, the software is shipped with the default settings as well, so you can just have a go and look look, look at them. And then also, uh, you can go to the wall framing. If, you, if your uh, building has framed walls, you can go into the wall framing, and you can either change the settings of the existing one, or you can just uh, completely build a new one for yourself. And again, the software is shipped with, uh, with a built-in built template uh, setting list that you can just uh, go with and then you can just go there and fully customize whatever you want yes. uh, from the framing. And then this can be stored, even you can create your own customized styles, uh, just as just as we did with this one. 
it's kind of a list of uh, a few styles that we have created and a little sample how they connect to each other. Mm -hmm. It's like a so show. This is kind of yes, yes, and this is how it looks like when you when you work with uh, detailed settings. And at any point, if you started with a uh, with the conceptual uh, drawing, at any point you can go there and start detailing it or change the settings. Uh, this is how it goes with the, with those settings. So let's move one floor up and see how do we create from one to the other. So how do we get from the first floor to the next to the second one? Yes, yeah, so now we have an empty floor. So I'm going back to this one and I select the content that I'm I'm willing to copy. And this is uh, well, literally nearly everything. So I just select everything here and I say, okay, I just would like to copy these to from the first floor to the second floor or, or any other that I have here. And I can say, okay, and then now I have this copy automatically repeated mm -hmm. here. Let me just uh, focus on the 3D. And I, you can see that now up there, there's a few things that I perhaps should, should remove because that, that just that does not make sense uh, here. And so on. So I'm just clearing this up so you, you will see that the difference between the, uh, between the, uh, the top level and the bottom level is now obvious. We don't have the, we actually have the, the 2D um, shapes uh, from the original DWG drawing. But when I'm uh, I'm erasing that, you will see that we we do not have anything else other than uh, the real structure. Now I have uh, a few things to solve. And one is the uh, one is the staircase here. So I'm going back to the previous floor because the uh, stair itself can cut the floor above itself automatically, so you don't even have to draw it. But of course, if you want, you can. Um, do it mm -hmm. manually as well. And also, if I go to the following floor, I'm actually using the page up, page down keys on, on my keyboard, but uh, also uh, there's the same. Uh, if you use these two buttons here, you can switch between the floors. And then you can just simply go there and customize any of those things. Now, let me just uh, erase this group and just focus on the uh, slab. So what I do now, I just uh, click on offset. And just as I did before, it's I'm just reshaping. Really. Yeah, I'm just reshaping this and uh, I just create a little balcony here uh or i mm -hmm. just uh, draw a new one a completely new one and on and on this one i will just create a railing uh i can also create a railing of course for the for the stickers itself but now i'm willing to create one here and i will just go with one of those styles that i have here with for example with this one whenever you select one you will see the little uh, thumbnail here it, it describes how it will look like uh, and in general, and then when you create that, yes. perhaps you need to change the uh, the position of it. You can do that either in the 3D or in the uh, 2D. Now I'm just elevating this to another location. Let's say, okay, it's somewhere here. I can just use a value to to place it to the proper uh, location. Yes. And well, and of course, this is also going to. Uh, yeah, just just one question. We've been talking about about this for 25 minutes now, but we haven't even mentioned BIM, even though that was the first thing you said. So yeah, uh, we know that that Arshan is is a BIM software. Now, what does that mean? That that means several things. One of which is the not the, the data that you can add to elements. So when you draw a wall, it's not only a bunch of lines or it's it's a 3D body. It's actually a wall with properties that you can you can add from maybe a manufacturer library. So if you know the the particular uh, materials being used for this wall construction, you can add that as as uh, BIM information. <laughs> now, why is that important? That is that is uh, that is crucial because you can retrieve this information even if you add this project to another software. And that reminds me that we have uh, we have one example project where we imported an a BIM file, an IFC file from another BIM software, which is very widespread. So yes. we just want to show you very quickly what happens if you if you store data in in a in a BIM file format. I'm not sure how familiar you out there are with the IFC file format, but that is the de facto file format for I, for uh, for BIM. This particular project you see on the screen is a very known project from another software product. The reason why we are just showing this to show you is that if you import something from another software and if it's in a BIM format, most likely you'll be able to use it to your advantage. So just like it was, it would have been done in Archline, you'll be able to edit it with the same freedom and, and same flexibility. And the very, very, and the very important thing here is that those are not uh, 3D bodies, uh, models, right. or something like that. Those are walls, and uh, those are windows. Those are uh, the original items at the same geolocation how it was set mm -hmm. uh, originally in the or original design software, saved in an IFC file, and then imported into Archline. And the same uh, goes uh, for the output. You can export IFC files uh, from uh, Archline, and you can collaborate. 
in a in a beam level with the other uh, um, um, people that you would like to meaning work. that even if they don't use Arch line, you will be able to exchange uh, plans with them. And that reminds me, this not this is not only limited for projects. This is all also true to objects. So Arch line is able to connect to three libraries out there. Uh, the yes. 3D warehouse is one of those, which is very widespread. It's, it's the largest user generated 3D modeling library. But we also connect to the uh, depository called BIMobject.com, which is the largest manufacturer made and maintained uh, element library. So if you're looking for something which already has a 3D representation, you are able to bring it in along with its information. But that was just a slight detour. So let's get back to the building and proceed with the, I think now comes the roof, isn't it? Because now, Rain could be falling in, so we need to know how to cover this building up. Yeah, I just have a uh, one following version of this project where I actually created uh, some top uh, ceiling, and then here I'm just switching to the uh, roof floor, which is uh, quite simple now. This is it's only mm -hmm. the ceiling itself. So I will use the building and the roof tool, and I will use the well again. If uh, this is a this is a roof on top of walls, then I can just do, do the same I did with uh, with the uh, ceiling and the floor, and then yep. uh, if it's not, then I can just uh, manually sketch the contour, uh, whatever contour I would like to use. If I made a mistake, no worries. I just go back and I use the undo tool whenever necessary. And then I go and change the shape of this thing. By default, the software will create an automatic shape like that. And you can go and set the height, for example. This should fall to zero. It will be on top of the uh, structure. And then you can set up the eaves pearl and middle pearl and everything as you wish. Uh, you can also change the, uh, the, the tiles. Uh, you can change the ridge. You can disable the valley and so on. So you, this is how it looks like now. And mm -hmm. also, uh, it's a very important thing that you can change the shape how it looks like, for example, this part, which falls to this end of the building, there are additional uh, neighboring buildings, so we will have a gable end, uh, and I update that, so this is how it looks like. And then also, of course, if you want, you can change all this, all the planes to for, use, a, for example, a specific uh, uh, pitch like this, and then you can just go there and uh, specify a different pitch for any other. So I just uh, make this a little bit more uh, with a bit of higher angle with this one and this one and then mm -hmm. this is how it goes so it's very very simple very visual and whatever you do it's uh, it's automatically visualized in the in this in this 3d and when you hit okay and the software creates that and just to have the final touch here uh, let me just create a gutter a ring gutter would be in order yep. otherwise there will be some trouble so a ring gutter again is, is one of those tools which are automatically generated so you don't have to manually track the path even though you can you can just uh, click on the edge of the roof define the section profile, uh, maybe fine-tune the offsets if you want. So that way the red line which shows the edge of the roof would be in sync with the model itself. So you can just jiggle around these, these settings until you have the right, right shape. And then comes the downspout, in which case uh, at least you have something in which the spider could climb up, right? So you can just uh, yeah. generate the, the downspout and say how long you want it to be, what the cross-section and profile should be. And that way, this is just basically a 3D model which is generated in accordance with how the roof looks like. So hitting OK, you can just accept that and see how it looks like. If you don't like it, you can fine tune the path by clicking on it and, and jiggle it around in 3D. So I think modeling is, is in fact done. Now comes the, uh, the documentation uh, task, which is actually what puts money on the table because you want to know how to get documentation out of this. The first thing we would need to set up is the right geolocation because that would define everything from the shadow simulation to the other project properties. I understand yeah, sure. has another version of this project, so that, that's what we are going to use. It, um, yeah, um, I just loaded that. Well, there, there's one extra thing, thing that I use here, is, and those are the columns that, that you can find here. It's very oh, simple yes, to that's use. Right. And then, uh, well, what I do now, I just go to the file BIM and project parameters. Here you can find, mm -hmm. and you can fill up all the project parameters that you would like to for the, the uh, site name, the begin date, uh, the client's name and so on. And also this is where uh, you can find the project location and you can say that, okay, now this is located at the specific location of the globe. And well, now I'm in Budapest, so that's why you can see this here. But if you, uh, can you help me where this building yeah, was? It should not? be uh, Carmel Avenue um, at Cerrito, which would be close to uh, where Barbara, our host is located. So, Indeed. Okay, so Yes, yeah, okay, so uh, Novich is located in Berkeley, isn't it? We tried to look for a location which is which is close to the. Yes, Berkeley. yes, yes. 
we so I just found this at random, obviously. Well, I, I don't I don't know if this uh, lot is still vacant, but uh, we found it is it's it's vacant, so we can yes. place this building here. And also, and if you say okay, then from this point on, your building is located at that specific location of the globe. And also, you can go here and you can set up. This is actually the north direction, so you can also mm -hmm. set up the orientation of your building uh, in connection to what you see on the on the screen here. So if you would like to change the uh, north direction to another location like this, you just do that, and then the software changes the north direction uh, in comparison to the two. Right. Uh, Ilish, I understand that we have some rendered images we could be showing that you know that would illustrate what happens if you set up the the, <laughs> the north the north direction and the geolocation perfectly. So Arsene yes. does come with a built-in rendering engine, and that would be able to create rendered images of the models that you are creating. So if you start a rendering, we are not going to do that now because uh, we just want to show you the end result very quickly. Then you would get a result like uh, like the one that you are going to show you in a, in a few seconds. So that will be the end result. So Arsene does come with a built-in renderer, and also it's able to connect to other third-party rendering engines. So if you want to connect to a rendering engine you already use, so be it, you can do that. But if you want to rely on the built-in uh, rendering, then that's the result you could be expecting. So here is a few examples of the rendering engines we are connecting to uh, Cinema 4D, Thea Render, Artlantis, just to mention a few. I under understand that Novage is also uh, dealing with uh, Artlantis, so they are also selling that software product, so that would be a good match. Uh, you would be able to export data into, into Artlantis from, from Artlantis. And uh, having having talked about the, the rendering uh, and the rendered images, I think now comes the uh, maybe not that exciting part of documentation, but it's no less important, sections and elevations. So we need to yeah. know how to get actually line drawings out of this because the 3D model is fine and it's, it looks very good, but you need to know how to get something you can actually measure up and dimension. So what we are doing now is that we are turning off all the layers we don't need and then we just we are just left with the <laughs> building that we created and then we go with a section. Now the Oh, sorry. First, we have. Oh, well, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Well, anyway, so, uh, I'm just placing a few uh, dimensions around, and then we will create the uh, sections and the elevations as well. Uh, you can select uh, from the, the list uh, at the top, and you can build up uh, your own um, job list, the task list for the software. So when you do that, and then you select uh, the uh, floor that you have already designed. Then when you hit enter and did you place the first uh, dimension string where whenever you uh, feel it's uh, most uh, visible and then you click then the software automatically creates mm -hmm. all the uh, door and window dimensions and all, all the length dimensions uh, and as you can see those are all visualized in a certain uh, value I just use this in millimeters uh, but you can also uh, use it in feet and inches and then also uh, when you document it, then you are free to choose uh, use, uh, using other uh, line endings and, and uh, other That's sort right. of uh, standards. So the point yes. here is that if you have different standards, different line weights or even font types, you can change that in the settings. Just use whichever is better for your purposes. Same applies for the room and area steps. So if you want to use these steps, you will be able to identify the room size and then the software does all the calculations needed in order to get the right results. Uh, this is especially useful when it comes to lofts and and the uh, attic space where the headroom is important to be calculated properly. The software is prepared to do that as well. Now I think comes uh, sections and elevations, don't they? Yeah. Uh, let me just create the section first. Uh, it's very very simple. You can create. You can you can actually set up all the settings. I'm just uh, well. Still, this is a conceptual drawing, but I will uh, set up the hatch on section so we will see. Uh, the structure is much better uh, visualized and distinguished with the, with all their uh, structural uh, details inside. So what I do, I just uh, pick one starting point for this section line. I pick the end point. I can also create a kind of um, you know broken line uh, section, like a polyline section. But uh, what I'm willing to show you that is after you already created something and you say that well, okay, I did not find the proper place because I'm actually just yes. uh, creating a section of a uh, of a partition wall in that case you can just go here you say that okay uh, I, I would like to insert a note here to break this line and then with this new line part I just make an offset and then when I hit enter and then I say yes to update to the section then now I have a better uh, result and the same goes with when when I start detailing the, the structure with the layers and I start adding all the rest of the uh, building parts this uh, section is in connection with the original section 
So these are dynamic sections, and I think we have the same abilities for elevation drawings as well. So if you want to create the, the four major elevation drawings for this particular model, you can do it the same way. You just click on the, the tool to, to get it done, and then you end up with something which is not quite a line drawing. It's more like a representation of the 3D model. With the added benefit is that you can have it shaded. So if you want to have yes. textures on it, if you want to have a simulated shadow on it, you can do that too. And uh, probably you and have to click on... The, and, um, and in, in yeah, regards of this, I, I, I forgot to show you one another thing, and this is here. Uh, well, this is a technical drawing. It's for documentation. And this is for uh, for many purposes, also for rendering and anything else. But uh, if you would like to, you can also create a shadow simulation here in the 3D very fast, very quickly. Even if you have the surrounding buildings, it will it will uh, work even better. Uh, if you just go to the view and you use this, this shadow simulation, then based on the geolocation, the software will automatically uh, determine the proper uh, date and time that I've previously set. And then I can just move this around and see how the shading and the shadows are changing during the day at the specific uh, location at the specific date and it, I can also mm -hmm. change the date not just the time so I will have a very very quick overview of how my building affects itself uh, the surrounding and how the surrounding affects my building uh, later I will load up a version where uh, we actually have a tiny bit of this uh, surrounding as well so it works the same uh, in that version too yes that's all about line drawings. What what happens with calculated values? Maybe you want to create a, like a schedule or quality takeoff. So how do you how do you get that done? Well, this is also in the documentation. You can find the schedule and the tags here. Uh, there's also Excel output. You can use that as well. Now I'm uh, focusing only on the schedule. You can find this uh, design this defined schedule. You can you can build your own schedules, and you can also uh, place an existing schedule that you designed before. You can just go with the default ones. I'm I'm actually picking a default one from the software, and then uh, I say that well uh, I just would like to uh, list the doors from this floor. Uh, I do not need need the sill height. I perhaps do not need the uh, the floor or something like that. I can disable these, and when I say okay. Then I can uh, set up how it will look like. I can customize whether I would like to see grand totals or or, or, or anything mm -hmm. like that. And when I go with an OK, then I, this is also something as a list. It is part of the drawing. It can be listed. And also uh, an important thing that this is connected with the original drawing. So what you can see, it's uh, not just the um, the extracted data with the names with height and floors. But when you click here and you see there's an ID, and when you click on this little icon, then the software points to a specific door. So this means that this door here on the first floor with this specific size, with this name, is actually this one. So whenever you change this, this list will be automatically updated. And also, as you can see, I can edit these values. So I can change this uh, value here, and that will also change the door itself. So it's a bi-directional connection between the data and the uh, BIM model itself. Mm -hmm. How about we collect all these things we have generated and put them all into a layout? Because that will be the end result that we are working towards. Yes, um, well, that is something that you can uh, do with the documentation, the um, plot layout. And you go to prepare a plot layout. This is, I, it's kind of a virtual uh, paper that you prepare mm -hmm. uh, in advance. And you can uh, create a bunch of pages uh, just to collect all the, all the details and to be able to properly print it or, or document it in PDF files. And then also you can go with uh, plot stamps or title boxes. You can design your own title boxes. Most people do. Or you can uh, go with the default ones and uh, ship with the software. And when I select this one, you will see how it looks like. The software prepares this page. And when I hit OK, then the software automatically places it. And, it, and when, if I already had this uh, data here uh, in the BIM uh, data, you remember we had this name, client yeah. name, and so on. So if I already filled that up, uh, and I hit OK, then the software will automatically fill those uh, things in. And then what I need to do, I just decide what sort of uh, drawings from the left, left hand side from the project project navigator I would like to place here. So, for example, the first floor, I click and drag and release. And then I say, OK, it would be best in 1 to 100. And then I place it. And well, uh, well, for this specific calculation, for this specific documentation, I don't need this little uh, information. So I just narrow down the viewport not to see that content, uh, well, even though that is still part of the drawing, but now the viewport is not seeing that. So I can place several different versions mm -hmm. of the same drawing. I can also import any sort of rendered image, or I can just place, for example, the uh, elevation as well in the same, um, same fashion. 
and I can start detailing. I can start at, for example, a title for this uh, drawing. I can go here and say, okay, this is what I would call a uh, first floor. Um, yes, first but floor. if you if you change the drawing here, then how do you update the, the layouts? Um, yeah, well, this is this is what I do. I just uh, give it a name. Uh, I just select another size for the text. I just place it like this. And then when I'm done, I uh, just go back. So this was the original drawing, and this is the uh, uh, virtual page. And then here, what I do, I just right click here and I say, okay, refresh this. Or I can actually uh, just as well, the same way I can refresh everything else. And then it appears here. So this is also in connection. And now I can go to uh, file, print, or publish to PDF, or uh, well, it, de it depends on what I would like to uh, extract uh, as an information out of this content. Perfect. So once we have uh, printed that, obviously we are not going to print it out now. We have the documentation under uh, under control, but there's another thing we want to show, uh, uh, don't we, Ilish, uh, about live, how yes. to make visualization uh, even more exciting. Yes. The one last thing before I do that is uh, this in this version of the uh, project, I just would like to show you one visual thing, which is I think it's it's a very very cool thing to do, even even without live, but with with live it will be uh, even more spectacular. That actually from within the software you can create uh, in the view you can create animations. You can just create the path. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say that okay from here uh, via this path I just would like to go around, look at the building, and then this is something that I would like to set up for the height and okay and then I have a preview and I can just say that okay I start from this this height I go through to this point uh, on uh, through this height and then I end up at this uh, location and then when I uh, set up the length for that uh, making it I don't know like eight uh, seconds and I just go back and I start playing it then this I already I can already save this uh, quality out of uh, out of the software as a video file, it's very very fast. Or I can uh, go to uh, Arsenal XP Live, and whenever I hit this button, uh, there's a message coming up. When I hit Enter, uh, yes, then the software will uh, start passing this information to uh, Live, and this is what I will have. Uh, on, yep. Yeah, uh, what, what is Arsenal XP Live? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Arsenal XP Live uh, is uh, an Aquis software based on a very popular uh, graphic engine, the Unreal Engine. And then now I, I think uh, you can see the uh, information uh, as, a, as a video file, and then I pass the word over to Zoltan to comment it a little bit. So the point of Arch and XP Live is to bring movement into your renders, because a, a render standalone still image is fine, but the, the way you could show your projects even in a, in a, in a much better light is that if you bring in movement and moving elements. So not only can you use the models that you create in ArchLine in live, but you can also bring in elements and objects and models from other CAD software products. And you can sort of dress dress the model up. You can add foliage, uh, objects, you can add people, you can modify how the image looks like, you can modify the, the, the depth of field, you can modify the how the camera looks at elements. And you can just basically, as we call it in the office, bring your projects to live. Uh, give it something that that extra punch that you would need to to sell your design, and this is something that Ilish mentioned that it, it's based on a very uh, well known and well used graphical engine. It's the same engine that's been used for years now for A list video games. That means that Ocean is a very easy to handle and very sort of game like software in which the changes are realized in seconds. So you can even sit down with your clients and show them that this is variation number one. Is version number two, version number three, and if you don't like it, we can change things. You could you could add so kind that kind of details that would be impossible to do in any in a, in a CAD software because because of the number of surfaces, the concept of movement, the lights, they could be only realized in a different engine in a different environment where movement is the key and communicating your ideas better is what actually sells your project in the long run. So you don't not only want to create obviously documentation and rendered images, but rendered videos in which it's all about movement. That is what is going to going to get your ideas across. Did I miss anything, Ilish? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So and and it's uh, terribly cool to work with. I I must say it is. You it is. I, I love I love working with it. I, you don't have to be a CAD. I, I'm I'm not a CAD master myself. I'm not even an architect. So, uh, but even even I can operate it. And I, and I love doing it because it's like I said, it acts like a video game. 
it's like an FPS game. So what do we see on the image now? Well, what we see now is that after the uh, model was passed, that you can see all the views that you have created previously in the design software are all passed to the visualizer, to our, to Arch Live, the Arcris tool. This is actually a standalone software that you can uh, install mm -hmm. and purchase separately. And then uh, what you see here, those are not just the views, but those are automatically created as image files. And then from this point on, whatever you do with that it can be updated and you can just in one second, literally, uh, you can create those visuals with all the reflections and all the details and you can send over to your clients and uh, and it's also very fast to create video outputs so there's no no rendering time whatsoever now well we can say that uh, what you see here is the same thing that we have uh, previously set in this uh, in the design software with the proper location proper north direction uh, mm -hmm. the date uh, and time what you can see on screen and this is uh, appearing all in real real time uh, with uh, on on the graphics card, uh, yes. and uh, all the uh, animation is also here. That's well, I've created only one uh, single uh, animation, so this animation is listed here. But as you play through, this is the same eight second animation, starting from the top and ending at uh, the right hand side somewhere else. And then uh, when you would like to, you can save this as a as a as a file as well. So now um, mm -hmm. I mainly use this. Uh, this view list to navigate through the through my views and then also we have set up all the uh, wall surfaces with proper materials we didn't talk that talk about this that much detail but you can actually set up render styles in the in the design software to tell that whether this is a wall it's a ceiling it's a it's a glass surface uh, it's a, it's something uh, else like a water surface or something like that and if you did then the software already understood that for example the water water surface should have something that is flowing and it automatically plays so now actually the surrounding is living uh, around the building now even the uh, clouds are moving you will uh, see that later and then also you can change the um you can actually check or change the existing light sources that you have added to uh design you can change their color mm -hmm. uh, you can change their intensity you can turn them on or off you can fully customize the way, right. the way you want so the things that we would be exporting from an Arshine model is, is basically the, the model itself, geolocation, uh, lights, yes, and, and the software is, and textures, right? Is also shipped with very detailed materials, as you can see now. We can see the built-in library of the uh, of, of the live software itself. Uh, that that uh, very nice detailed cobblestone was part of the library. Also the asphalt and and the rest of that. Uh, there are different ways to search uh, for, for uh, items. You can just uh, use the freestyle search engine and you can just uh, click and drag things. You can even create your own materials and you can just uh, import mm -hmm. materials from uh, the design software uh, to extend this library. And uh, also the same way you can just uh, keep adding those details. As you can see, it's very, very nice. And also the same goes for the um the water surfaces uh these are moving is, uh, surfaces aren't they so yeah. it's not really a, a static texture it's more like a, a living a movement moving yeah. texture so yes like like we said in the beginning it's all about movement so you want to show that you want to capture that you you want to show that things are in living relationship with each other so for example if you want to change the texture of anything you can just drag and drop the elements you don't like that you can just drag another element and you can change that so it's more about you do the, the desktop work in a CAD software and then you dress it up in life. So life is not really about uh, creating documentation. It's more like dressing up your model and, and show it in the best possible light. And hyper fast. As you can see that everything yes. that happens is, uh, is, is, is all with the reflections and everything is running in, in, in real time uh whenever you work with uh with the software now of course if you have uh very uh, heavy models you need a powerful gpu for that but now this uh, uh this uh, what we see here is uh it's, it's happening on a on a what, what i can say it's a it's a medium uh or or high medium um graphics card so it's not the not the best that you can buy but not not uh, not somewhere in the uh, lower level so you need uh well we actually have this uh the system requirements on our website so you can check that mm -hmm. and uh, you can also try the software to, uh, for yourself and uh, as you can see the software is shipped with built-in library of cars uh humans um or some of them are are animated that you can place uh, you can just rotate them uh, with the translators. You can just move, rotate, rescale any item. You can import uh, objects uh, to the software as well. And then the same goes if I just place this uh, item here in the 3D, you can see that this is also playing an animation, animated sequence. So it's like it's, it's actually living. 
uh, it's moving around and looking around in this building. And when you create the visuals, when you create the snapshots, it will be a, a still image. But uh, if you record the animation, uh, those things that you are, that you see are moving uh, during design will move on the animation as well. The same goes for the trees, for example. Uh, foliage, that's very good to mention because in a CAD software, the number of surfaces would be too large to handle. But in live, live doesn't really care about the number of surfaces. It just delivers moving trees and bushes and shrubbery. So not only can you place individual elements from a library that we have, so you can just pick whichever element you want, but also you can sort of use the, the foliage as, as, a, as a brush and just brush over the surface that we are going to see in a couple of, uh, couple of seconds, how to create like an area covered in shrubbery. You don't want to do that by hand. Instead, you want to sort of just, just paint the areas and see how the model looks like when you do that. How does it, this work, by the way, English? Well, well, I, I I must say this is also means you can see that uh, you can uh, you you have a few uh, predefined uh, trays that you can just go with and you can customize these trays. Now, for example, this was built using any of those drag and drop here onto this tray, and then when I use the bushes, uh, I just you know I just click and drag, and this is how I paint the surface. I can change the uh, the ratio of uh, of the of the things uh, in, in, uh, inserted into this uh, brush, and I can also change the brush radius to paint larger areas or smaller areas. I can also, if uh, it's necessary, for example, I accidentally overpainted a, a pavement or something like that, and I can just use the eraser and just erase a few things. I just click over mm -hmm. there or I just click and drag. And then I, I can use the cross field to, you know, paint this area with, uh, with, with, with grass, cut grass or wild grass. Uh, it depends on my choice. And also, if I would like to, I can uh, change to another brush uh, to, for example, to the small grove and then, you know, just keep adding those uh, trees. And then, well, this happens when you would like to, you know, kind of uh, add the, some, some sort of random uh, natural um, uh, thing to, to the foliage. But if you would like to place one specific tree to a specific location, you just go there and pick and uh, click and drag and, and place them uh, over where you want mm -hmm. them. You can just uh, resize them, uh, you can just place them, uh, move them around and rescale them if you want. Uh, is it just, just a side note, is it possible to bring in extra elements from uh, another source maybe? Yes, 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 uh, you can, uh, there's an import uh, option that you can use and uh, you can import to other objects from uh, other software as well. Now, uh, here comes another interesting part, this is for the effects, uh, the software is built with, uh, with, for example, fire effects. Uh, and those, as you can see, those have a nice, uh, nice uh, detailed uh, high fidelity uh, playback. And uh, this gives uh, a lot of details when you, for example, have fireplace uh, inside or outside. And those, uh, the same thing goes for the smoke and the candle fire as well. Mm -hmm. So now I what we... that you can update the visuals, right? So once you have everything yes. under control, then you can just uh, update the images that you have done. Uh, what about the animation? Yes, and well, th there's one another thing that uh, happens first uh, I would like to show you is that it's if you forgot to carry over something that you can pre-sync the model or you can just send over any other content that you wanted to mm -hmm. use in your model. So uh, once you already started working on the visuals, uh, now with the latest version, you can use the uh, live sync function to uh, keep uh, the, the original BIM model and the visual connected and keep it updated. Or you can just, what I just did, you can just send over one single object, uh, customize it the way you want, for example, change its materials uh, if you want, um, change its uh, light source, uh, and then make a few copies of that. You can even uh, save uh, a new copy of uh, this, what I do he here into the library. So later on, I have this uh, prepared automatically. Uh, so what happens here, uh, I just dress up the model, uh, which was already created uh, previously and I will change the light source itself. And then uh, uh, as a final touch, I will, I think it's the best if you, if I just add the new one another uh, animation to this one with the updated visuals, and then also uh, a few things uh, I will change about the lighting the light later uh, inside. So uh, what, what happens, just, uh, just a short question. Uh, what happens if something changes in your design? Can you update it? You don't have to show it, but just uh, how does that work? Well, that, that, that works in a very simple fashion. You just uh, click on the view and then you just rig, uh, you just use the uh, uh, snapshot button. And oh, okay. uh, well, for example, uh, what I do now is I just change this helper light to uh, real light, which uh, casts shadows, as you can see on the ground. 
uh, you can turn it on or off and you can change it. And well, if I change that, uh, I can just, uh, in a second, I can just create a new image uh, and I can just send it over to the clients, even just by, for example, uh, playing with the options and then see which works best. I can just uh, save several copies, just as, for example, in this case, now what we see on screen and what we see on the original snapshot is different. And then now I just mm -hmm. create a new version uh, with this button. I just click on that. Uh, it, it took one second and then I can check the file, which was the outdoor PNG. It was named after the view. And this is how it looks like. And it took, uh, and it's, and this resolution is now actually in, uh, in full HD. You can change the resolution uh, here in the software settings, in the options, there's the snapshot and animations. Now, window size means the application size, and now, now the application runs in full HD. So now it equals to full HD, but you can customize it the way you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, so, let's just, yeah, sorry, yeah. No, no, I was about to ask you about the uh, animation because, uh, you know, many, many things change. So you want to update the animation too. That's right. So now this was the original animation now with the, with a, with a lot of extra. And then now if I click on the, uh, the timing, I think I should slow that down because it was a bit, uh, hasty, but I think now this will work better. And then for example, now I have a new idea that, well, okay, this shot is good, but I would like to add an extra shot, which is for example, uh, somewhere in front of the building, uh, and it's kind of, a, uh, an elevator view. Um, and then I just go, uh, to find the first location. I just, uh, you know, pan and click and drag and rotate the model to find the best view. And then now what I do, I just add the new animation with this button and which already automatically creates the first frame of this animation. And then I find the final location where I would like to end up. And then now with the left, right hand side, I click on this button and I add the extra frame, uh, to the end and I change the length just as I did before. And then when I go and play from the beginning, now this is what we have. Should it be slow, I can speed it up. Should it be uh, too fast, I can slow it down. Uh, but from this point on, I can save it as an anim animation and I can even uh, go further. I even don't need to use an image, uh, I mean, a, a video processor to, uh, you know, stitch them together. I can just use this, uh, these two options. And then uh, I even have a transition, which uh, goes from one video to the other one through this, uh, black uh, animation uh, it's going to the other one uh, and it's uh, going to end like this uh, at the end and I can just generate the video file it will take a little longer obviously than the than the snapshots but within a few minutes you will uh, end up with the full HD uh, nice detailed animation uh, in the end and of course uh, you will also have the final versions of those uh, images that you have created for example this one and this one and for example, a nice overview from the street, uh, the opposite of the street. That's right. So we made it in, in about 60 minutes. We actually talked about two things. One was Archon XP, the design software in which we built up the model from the line work all the way up to the 3D model. <laughs> and then we talked about Archon XP Live, which was able to make visualization even more exciting. We have a few questions here, so let me just read them out to you. Uh, here's a question. Uh, the uh, viewer asks, I'm working on a unique uh, roundhouse. Can Archline XP help with this? Well, actually, the roots in Archline uh, lies with the survey of traditional buildings, which by definition are irregular. So when it comes to weird shapes and curves and, and bends, Archline is very good to handle those. Uh, obviously, this is without me actually seeing the, the building in question, but I can say that many, many uh, projects realized in Archline has the right amount of curvature, if I may say that. Another question, uh, does Archon XP work with vector works? Well, if by work me, you mean that you would be able to read files to and from vector works, I think the answer would lie in the, the IFC file format I discussed earlier. So since well, I know that vector work is able to read and write IFC files, if you use yeah. this file format as the channel for communication, then you would be able to read to and from vector works. But this is again, something that you would be able to see once you test it. Another question about, uh, do you have rainwater beam objects or are these 3D model? Now, this is actually a two-parter question. So when we created the rain gutters, uh, they were created within Archline. Uh, based on profiles that we have in the software, you know, uh, set up by default. But if you change the profiles to manufacturer profiles, which you might be taking from a, an object library, then you can do that. So you can bring in additional elements and then you can just override what we have in the software. We don't 
we don't know 100% sure uh, what kind of rain gut or section profiles you have in, in America. So you could just bring in another one and, and use it, use that instead. So uh, I think these three were the questions I, I see, but if I missed anything, then Barbara would be uh, telling me later on. No, no, so, those were those were all the questions. And actually, great, thank you, know, you very much. Yeah. I tried my best to cover them all. So if there's anything what we haven't discussed, you still have a few minutes to uh, to to specify your questions. Yeah, we're sticking around a few minutes. And uh, thank you guys. That was amazing. And uh, I'm so excited that I'm gonna have you both on again in a couple of weeks. And That's right. We'll have another show uh, that and that will be focusing on interior design because this time we we figured that it should be mostly about architecture but let's not forget that Arshan has a as a complete feature set for interior design when it comes to for example tiling and and lamps and light sources all kinds of exciting stuff uh, kitchen design for example what we haven't touched upon today but in about two weeks we are going to yes um you know, go to novage.com. We have a webinar section where there's all the webinars, upcoming webinars listed and um, join us again in a couple of weeks. That's super exciting. That's right. And That's right. I'm going to take um, the screen back because mm -hmm. I, want, uh, I want to show everybody that we are so impressed by ArchLine capabilities that we would like you to experience it firsthand, you know, test it, go back and forth between back to works and other uh, bin tools that you, that you have. And, and then uh, you have two months, uh, two full months, a free trial to do that. So if you, in the next couple of weeks, um, contact us, at sales at novage.com and ask us for this free trial, we can set you up. So um, I, I think this is a great opportunity and I'm really thankful for our partners for um, thinking about it and uh, make this special offers for um, you know our Novage contacts. Thank you guys. And, no problem. Uh, well, we figured that if you want to use something, if you want to try it and get to know it, uh, a week or two would, would not be enough. So we don't have a problem with giving you an extended opportunity to try the software because you want to be 100% sure that if you switch to something else, it will deliver. So we give you the time to actually decide for yourself because what we show you now is our experience, but what you are working in the everyday job that you have, you will see the things from your perspective. So, and that needs time, obviously. Exactly. And this is um, the page where you can find ArchLine on the Novage website, go to novage.com and uh, here it is. We also have Archline Live, which was awesome. Uh, as you. fun as a video game and it as is. easy. It is. As and easy. it's addictive, I can tell you that. I know, I'm gonna start playing with it. <laughs> and uh, I also want to remind you that I'm recording this session and I'll post it on YouTube and Vimeo later today. So if you want to rewatch it and share, share it with colleagues or coworkers, uh, bosses, um, people from your team, go ahead and give them the address, Noveg on YouTube and Vimeo. Thanks again for joining us today. See you again in a couple of weeks, Zoltan and Nilesh. Very nice very spending the the time with you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for Goodbye. joining.